important aspect of playing the drums is going to be your setup. And you want to be able to set the drums in a way that you're going to be comfortable and you can reach everything without overextending or overreaching for anything. Before you set up, it's good to think about maybe having a rug. If you're on a hardwood floor, you can be aware that the drums with the spikes, they might scratch the floor, the drum might slide, you can really do some damage to your floors. So I always use a rug, this kind of keeps everything solid and in place and it can also create a nice vibe for you to play on top of as well. A good place to start with your setup is your seat or your throne. You're going to be spending a lot of time sitting on this thing. So you want to make sure that you get something that's going to be pretty solid. It's going to support you. You don't want to get a chair because that's going to be too low. And you don't want to use a bar stool that's going to be too high. You want to get something that's going to be adjustable. And you're going to have to experiment a little bit and see where your body wants to sit. For me, personally, I like to sit just a little bit so that my knees are here and my thighs are just a little bit higher than my knees and I'm not too low, I'm not too high. Now you want to position your snare drum and the height is going to be important. For me, my height is a little low for some people but it's just the right height for me. I like to be able to get a nice rim shot without hitting my leg and I also like to be able to get nice diddles and different low notes and all without having to extend or get hunched over or reach too far. The angle of the drum is going to be important as well. You'll see a lot of different people use different angles. Some of the older jazz guys tended to tilt the drum away from them this way. That would work with traditional grip. I'll do that sometimes if I'm playing a lot more jazz or traditional types of things. Some of the rock guys might angle the drum this way if they're sitting low and kind of hitting match grip. You want to avoid having too extreme of an angle either way. You want to get something that's, you know, starting maybe flat and then adjust and see what works for you. And you want to do all this in increments and figure out what's going to make you comfortable. For me, with the drum, I like to put it right here where the strainer is easily reachable with my left hand so that I can keep playing with my right and move around the kit while I can turn on the snares or turn off the snares. I turn off the snares a lot to get different sounds out of the tom sound of the drum, but then I'll turn the snares on a lot as well. So it's nice for me to just have this easily reachable here. Some people tend to put the strainer here in between their legs, or some people might put it over here to reach with their right hand. You need to just experiment and see what's going to work for you. You want to be able to reach it without looking at it and basically just know where it's at. Next, I like to add the feet. So I put the bass drum pedal down and then the hi-hat pedal as well. You want to sit in a comfortable, relaxed position so that nothing is too far out of the way out here or over here. You want to get to where your feet want to sit naturally. So you might want to take these things away, see where your feet are going to be, and then just slide these things under your feet. The way I like to set up is once I've got my bass drum pedal in position where my body wants it to be, then I actually slide the bass drum into the pedal. Then you can clamp down on the pedal, make sure it's nice and tight, and then you've got your bass drum where you and your body want it to be. You're not trying to sit at a bass drum and then scoot to it and adjust to it. You're moving it to fit you. So now we're going to start mounting the toms. This kit has this post here with these tom mounts and they're adjustable this way, that way, and also you can raise the post or you can raise the drum on the post that it goes on as well. These all come with memory locks now so you can lock it in place so you know exactly where it's going to be when you go to put the drum back on. These drums that we're about to put up here are called mounted toms or rack toms because you put them up on a rack sometimes. And for me, I usually just use one mounted or rack tom and I usually just put it on a snare stand and get the snare stand almost touching the bass drum. It goes right here and that allows me to put the drum right there and I can get to it. And that way I can move the bass drum 
change bass drums if I want to if I'm in the studio and I don't have to worry about the tom stand too much. So there's lots of different options for mounting your toms. So now we have the toms up and I like to put them in a place where they're within easy reach with a slight angle. You might see some guys have their toms flat. Some guys might have them up way high and tilted at them. Basically, you just want to get what's comfortable for you to where you can reach them without having to overextend your arm too much. I like, as a general rule, for my setup to be able to have everything within reach without having to extend my elbow from my side too much. Now we add in the floor toms. I personally like to play two floor toms. You can play one or two or three, it's up to you. But generally, I like to have them about the same height as the snare, almost flat, a slight lean to me, but just very reachable. And you basically, again, want to be able to reach them without having to extend too much and without having to twist your body too much. So as I go in a natural arc, I just want the stick to be able to land where I want it to as I go around the drums this way. Now we add in the cymbals, and again, you just want to have them so that they're reachable without having to overextend. When you have two rack toms here, the trick is going to be to get the ride cymbal to where it's not too far away from you, but that it's not covering this second rack as well. So you're just going to have to experiment. Cymbal stands come in straight, or also this one is a boom, so you, you can adjust the cymbal and get it in exactly where you want it. If you have to put the bass in one place, you can use the boom to get the cymbal closer or where you actually need it to be. Cymbals are really a matter of preference. They're a color element of the kit. You're going to see different people with different setups that have all kinds of different cymbal setups, different crashes and maybe multiple rides and chinas and splashes, maybe even a gong. So there's so many different options. It's really up to you and what your budget can handle as well. So this is what I like to do. I like to have each cymbal so that I can ride it and crash it. For me, I keep my cymbals relatively low and this allows me to reach them without overextending again. But also, at the height that I'm sitting at with the cymbals here, I can see everybody and I can see the musicians I'm playing with, I can see the audience, and I'm not hiding behind any cymbals. You want to start with a nice, comfortable setup that's going to fit for your body. You want to try and see what feels good to you and adapt the drum set to you and your body. So you want to avoid trying to reach for things, and if you see something that somebody does on TV or on stage that's kind of crazy, you can try it out, experiment with it, but make sure that you can actually play for a long period of time with any kind of setup that you have. For me, I play long periods of time, lots of time behind the drums, so I try to make everything comfortable where I can reach it and I can continue to play for a long time.